coming Saturday at 9.30 a.m. Uh, here at the church for all men, all men. Uh, we'll be meeting here this Saturday at uh, 9.30 uh, a.m. Amen. 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 Apologize for it being so cold in here. It should warm up very, very shortly. Amen. We ask that you take your Bibles and run with us very, very expeditiously to the book of Ecclesiastes in the ninth chapter. And I'd like to lift the two verses of Scripture into your hearing. Ecclesiastes in the ninth chapter, verses 10 and 9. 10 and 9. When you have it, say amen. Amen. You'll find these words that are recorded. And whatsoever thy hand findeth to do, do it with thy might. For there is no work, no device, nor knowledge, nor wisdom in the grave, whether thou goest. I returned and saw under the sun that the race is not given to the swift, nor the battle to the strong, neither yet the bread to the wise, nor yet the riches to the men of understanding, nor yet the favor to the men of skill, but time and chance happen to them all. I want to talk to you from this thought subject, if you will, this morning. Can you go the distance? Amen. Can you go the distance? You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Can you go the distance? Can you go the distance? My brothers and sisters, there are many of us that can start something. But it's different when you can start and finish. And sometime in life's journey, life can deal us a bunch of lemons. But we've got to understand and learn that whenever life deals us a bunch of lemons, we've got to learn to make lemonade. I said this morning that I want to come to encourage all of you this morning because as I was sharing yesterday during a counseling session, uh, that there are many times that when you need to be lifted yourself, I find the best way to get lifted and to feel better yourself is when you can encourage somebody else. So I come to encourage this morning. Come on. Because there are many times, brothers and sisters, that if we get caught up in our own pity party and our own uh, things that we're going through, we'll never come out. We'll never be able to weather the storm when you continue to worry about the fact that you're in the storm. As I began to share with you once before, that even in the midst of the rain, we've got to learn to celebrate in the rain. Come on. We've got to learn how to dance in the rain. Because life is not a sprint, but life is a marathon. Life is not something that you sprint to the finish line, but it is absolutely a marathon. Because just because one day was a bad day doesn't make tomorrow going to be a bad day. That every day that we wake up, that God gives us another chance at life, we ought to be thankful. Just because you had a rough day yesterday, we ought to thank God for this day. I've been guilty as well as you've been guilty from time to time. That just because one day was bad, that we normally drag it over into the next day. But we begin to understand and realize that life is a marathon. When we understand that the Bible declares that the race is not given to the swift, not even to the strong, 
But he begins to declare that he that endureth to the end. There are many of us that don't realize that in order for us to walk the streets that are paved with gold, in order for us to make it into heaven's doors, the Bible declares that he that endureth, and the word to me endure means that we're going to have to go through some trials. We're going to have to go through some temptations. We're going to have to go through some things in life. People are going to disappoint us. People will let you down. Situation, things will come up. Ecclesiastes says, uh, in the latter part of that verse 11, he says, Nor yet favor to the men of skill. He says, but time and chance will happen to all of us. That means to tell me that you can be going along your merry way, not bothering anybody, not doing anything wrong, and sometimes life can just hit you right in the stomach. Sometimes you can just happen up on a blessing. You can happen up on some things. And, and, and sometimes it ain't because you were skillful. It ain't because you had all the knowledge and all the intellect. But the mere fact that favor rested on your life. It'll just sneak up on you. And the blessing will take you over just by coincidence. I've got a witness in here. Amen. For here it is, my brothers and sisters. Uh, if you will, turn your Bibles down to the book of St. Luke's Gospel. In the 22nd chapter, where I'd like to lift for you three verses of Scripture into your hearing. Luke 22, 31, 32, and 33. I want to also share this with you, anybody that is taking notes, that sometime in life you win, and sometime in life you learn. Uh, you notice I never said we lose, because you should never lose in life. That means that even when it looks like I lost, I really didn't lose, I absolutely learned something. So even though you went through a rough spot in life, maybe somebody walked off and left you, maybe you lost a house, maybe you lost a car, maybe you lost a best friend, maybe you lost a job, don't think you lost, but absolutely I learned something from the situation. So even as we look back and reflect over 2009, we can't say it was a bad year, it was a year of learning. Even when people have uh, disappointed you, you lost your job, and things have uh, not going in your favor, don't look at it as you're going through a rough time. Look at it as you're going through a learning experience. Because the one thing about life, it will teach you something. It will, it will educate you if you let it. So I begin to look at every situation and everything that I go through in life to say, you know what, what is God trying to teach me in this particular situation? Because everything you go through, brothers and sisters, really it is that God is really trying to teach us. He, he's not really trying to hurt us. He's really trying to teach us something in everything you go through. I don't care what kind of to uh, tolls you go through, what type of situations you're going through. It's really a teaching and a learning experience. Matter of fact, I often wonder sometimes why is it that the devil in hell continues to bring my name up in hell because I know my name is brought up in hell because it seems like hell is breaking out all around me everywhere I go to the left, to the right. It seems like hell just breaking out with somebody who knew what I was talking about and perhaps I begin to wonder is it not maybe that the devil in hell actually knows something about me that I don't even know. Maybe 